the Narcissus Stare Video Analysis. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, explaining for you all aspects of narcissism in a way that nobody else can to aid your understanding. I'm going to provide you with an analysis of a short piece of video footage in relation to an individual called Kenneth Copeland. It shows you a variety of aspects of the narcissistic dynamic in action and also a brilliant representation of one aspect of the narcissist stare. But before we get to that, who is Kenneth Copeland? Well, he is an American televangelist associated with the charismatic movement. The organization that he founded in 1967, Eagle Mountain International Church Incorporated, is based in Tarrant County, Texas. His sermons are broadcast across the United States and worldwide on the Victory Channel. He's written several books and resources. He preaches the prosperity gospel and is part of the Word of Faith movement. He has written that parishioners will get a hundredfold return on their investment through giving to God. He has an extensive television career and... His ministries are located in Fort Worth, Texas, on a 33-acre property valued back in 2008 at $554,000. He also owns various aeroplanes. More of that in a, motion, in a moment. He utilized the Federal Aviation Administration Program, or rather Kenneth Copeland Ministries has utilized that, that keeps flights private from tracking websites. And the ministry owns such five such aircrafts whose flights are kept private. United States Senator Chuck Grassley has questioned some of the flights taken by these aircrafts, including layovers in Maui, Fiji, and Honolulu. The ministry said that the stopovers were for preaching, or for allowing pilot rest. Copeland has been married three times. First to Ivy Bodeford in October 1955, and they divorced in 1958. And then he was straight on to Cynthia Davis, who he was married to from 1958 to 1961. And then it wasn't long before he then married Gloria, in, who he married in 1963. And they've been married for 59 years. Gloria co-hosts the ministry's flagship broadcast, The Believer's Voice of Victory, alongside Mr. Copeland. Copeland has amassed significant wealth during his career and has referred to himself as a very wealthy man. In 2021, he was listed as the wealthiest pastor in America with a net worth of $760 million. He's been involved in a number of controversies. In 2010, according to the Christian Post, Kenneth Copeland Ministries was criticised for failing to fly disaster relief missions to Heishi after allegedly promising an aviation relief assistance programme called Angel Flight 44. The Angel Flight 44 ministry was announced by Kenneth Copeland Ministries in 2006 and the ministry attempted to raise money to found it. There was the Mike Huckabee controversy. That was in late 2007. Mike Huckabee, a 2008 Republican presidential primary candidate, made six appearances on Copeland's daily television program, Believer's Voice of Victory. In January 2008, the Huckabee campaign paid to use Kenneth Copeland Ministries facilities for a fundraiser. The fundraising was at the church and was criticized by the Trinity Foundation. As a result of the Huckabee appearances, in December 2007, Kenneth Copeland Ministries was one of six ministries investigating the United States Senate inquiry into the tax-exempt status of religious organizations led by Senator Chuck Grassley. Kenneth Copeland Ministries was one of four that didn't cooperate with the Senate Finance Committee's request for information or volunteer to make reforms. The investigation could not conclude that the Copelands made personal profit from financial donations. In 2013, a measles outbreak with 25 confirmed cases in Tarrant County was attributed to the press to anti-vaccination sentiments expressed by members of the Copeland Ministries. The church denied making any such statements and urged members to get vaccinations, even offering free immunisation through the church itself. Pastor Terry Copeland Pearsons, who is Copeland's daughter, offered free vaccination clinics and advised those who did not attend one of the clinics to quarantine themselves at home for two weeks. 
In a website on uh, in a statement on the church website, Pearson said she wasn't against immunizations but raised concerns about them. In 2008, the ministry stated it owned five airplanes, one of which it valued at $17.5 million. In 2009, Copeland's $3.6 million jet was denied tax-exempt status, opening up a possible investigation into the church's expenses. Copeland also failed to disclose the salaries of his directors. Copeland's ministry bought a million, multi-million dollar Gulfstream 5 jet airplane. The jet was bought from filmmaker and businessman Tyler Perry, as of August 2018, Copeland had requested another $19.5 million for the building of a hangar, upgrading of the runway, and maintenance. Copeland's and other televang- televangelist use of private jets, luxury cars, and lavish houses has been criticized. In 2015, Copeland, in a broadcast alongside fellow televangelist Jesse Duplantis, defended the use of private jets as a necessary part of their ministry, comparing flying in a commercial jet to getting in a long tube with a bunch of demons. That's relevant as it is the focus of the video analysis. There's also a controversy in relation to COVID-19 and also in relation to issues surrounding the recent presidential election. Now, there's a lot more that could be said about Kenneth Copeland, but for the sake of brevity, it's the case that it's evident this individual is a narcissist. He exhibits the sense of entitlement, a lack of accountability, false empathy, various manipulative behaviours, haughty behaviours. He shows grandiosity, and there's a whole range of the narcissistic dynamic that is evidenced in a variety of instances which can be seen through various pieces of evidence that have existed over the years. I'm not going into that in detail today. Instead, I'm providing you with the video footage to enable you, first of all, to watch it and see what what do you notice of the narcissistic dynamic. The footage is an interview that's being conducted by a female interviewer towards Mr. Copeland, primarily asking him in this excerpt about the use of the private jets and, of course, the comment about not wanting in it, get, wanting to get into a long tube with a bunch of demons. I'm going to let you watch it first, and then I'm going to break it down for you. Here comes the excerpt. Isn't it true that you want to fly commercial so that you can fly in luxury? How much money did you pay for Tyler Perry's Gulfstream jet, for example? Well, for example, that's really none of your business, but... Isn't it the business of your donors? Listen, I paid. <laughs> the airplane that we have that I bought from Tyler... Perry, and I didn't pay anywhere. Any. Tyler's one of the greatest guys. He made it. He made that airplane so cheap for me. I couldn't help but buy it. I love your eyes. Again, getting back to the comment, you said that you don't like to fly commercial because you don't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. We wrestle not with flesh and blood but principalities and powers. Okay, what did you identify in terms of narcissistic indicators and the narcissistic dynamic? And, of course, the narcissist stare. You'll notice that when he's asked about how much has been paid for the plane, he immediately deflects by saying, this is none of your business. This, of course, is an attempt to nullify a threat to control posed by the question, whereby it's clear that there is a suspicion that the tax-exempt status of the aircraft ought not to be granted because they're being used for personal state, personal uses rather than for actual use within a tax-exempt business, which indeed various religious entities are allowed to obtain. But then the interviewer, of course, continues to challenge his need for control by asking, but isn't it the business of your donors? He starts off with, listen, I paid. A haughty remark whereby he is exhorting that she listened to him, that he's the one that's entitled to speak and she should listen to what he has to say. At this juncture, he pauses. And you can see, written large across his face, the struggle to keep the ignited fury in place. And then... It slips to a smile, 
Notice there's no warmth in that smile. It's not a natural smile. You can see, as per my excellent video, The Imitation Game, that that cherry picker has gone off elsewhere and has selected the appropriate face that needs to be demonstrated. And whilst his narcissism struggled to keep his ignited fury in place, it did just about, and then, boom, it applies the smile. But there's no warmth, and you can see in his eyes that he's not smiling at all. He then moves to talking about the airplane, and he remarks, Tyler's one of the greatest guys. Again, he's seeking to deflect and doing so through triangulation by making it appear that he's a kind person by praising Tyler Perry for his generosity. And then we get an excellent sentence, which is so representative of the mindset of the narcissist. Mr. Copeland states, He, i.e. Perry, made that airplane so cheap for me, I couldn't help but buy it, i.e. In actual fact, it's not my fault that I've purchased that aeroplane. And it's not my fault that I've done so using money sent by my donors. I've done it because it was so cheap I couldn't help it. A comment that's analogous to, you made me sleep with that person. Or, I couldn't help but hit you, you made me do it. I.e., this is the abrogation of responsibility and culpability that is seen so often with the narcissist by explaining, I'm not at fault. It's the other person that made me do it. He then explains, I love your eyes. A rather see-through attempt at flattery, which is part of a manipulation, a benign one, in an attempt to assert control over the interviewer. She is not affected by this and continues to challenge him by saying, getting back to the comment, you said you don't like to fly commercial because you don't want to get in a tube with a bunch of demons. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? This is challenge fuel. The fact that she is addressing him is giving him fuel, but the threat is too much that ultimately he is unable to keep the ignited fury in check, and this time he then erupts. He doesn't erupt in the manner of shouting at her, but he does raise his voice by stating, no, I do not, and don't you ever say, I did. Denial, nullification of threat to control, and then he says nothing but stares at her. For a number of seconds, there is an intimidatory stare which shows the cold fury emanating from Mr. Copeland. Oh, it's malicious that he's boring his eyes into the individual. And he doesn't erupt by shouting and screaming. There's no heated fury in that instance. But here, there's a glimpse of heated fury when he raises his voice. But instead, it is taken over by the cold fury as he glares at her, utilising one aspect of the narcissist stare. The narcissist stare has various parts to it. The most common one is that glare, which is used to intimidate the subject and nullify the threat to control that the subject has issued. If you want to understand more about the different types of the narcissist stare, please watch my video of that name. But here is an excellent example of it in action. And as he does so, he comes out with a quotation. He issues a Bible, quote, stating, We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. And he then gives a short grin thereafter, which also is devoid of warmth. Him issuing that quote, of course, is an attempt to nullify control by grandiosity and triangulation. I mentioned, of course, about the holy narcissist, and you will find that numerous televangelists are narcissists. But here we have one in action showing various aspects of the narcissistic dynamic and an excellent representation for you to see of the narcissist stare, which is issued as cold fury to intimidate the subject in order to nullify the threat to control posed by this reporter. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.